couple of you today in the evening at 5 o'clock because we had a, a virtual retreat uh, in the morning. And so thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, I'm praying for all of you and all of your needs. Uh, please comment in the comment section with any and all of your prayer intentions and needs. And uh, comment on how our video is looking and how the sound is. Uh, make sure you're commenting throughout the Mass. And let's begin our holy celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders in the sight of the nations. He has shown his, his mighty power. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us listen to this Sunday's readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, let us repeat. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Together. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. 
Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full together. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and to preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that will make people stumble. And a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people of his own. So that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody called uh, this week and they were uh, saying that I should measure my words. He said, Father Adam, you should measure your words. Well, and so what did I do? I went to the dollar store and I bought a ruler. And so I will measure my words. <laughs> I hope you are all having a smile on your face. We are having some really beautiful weather here. Absolutely gorgeous weather outside. The sun is shining. It's wonderful to be alive. The Lord is good to us all the time. And all the time, the Lord is good. You know, life is as such that we not always feel like doing the things that we are called to do. I don't always feel like preaching when I have to preach. I don't always feel like praying when I am called to pray. We don't always feel like caring. We don't always feel like staying but we do, because that's what we are called to do. And so, so often we may not even feel like being alive because of the things that befall us in this life, our problems and our burdens. Life, you know, is made up of joy and pain. Paul Lawrence Dunbar and... Uh, very famous poet said that it's pints of joy and pangs of trouble. Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble, but at the same time, he says, in today's gospel, do not let your hearts be troubled. He promised us that if we go after him, we will have a cross which is trouble, which is suffering, which is problems. And yet today he says, do not let your hearts be troubled because Jesus is referring to an interior peace. Do not lose your peace, he's saying. There may be wars waging outside of you, but inside of you. I am calling you to have peace. Yes, there is trouble, all around us right now, the trouble of the pandemic, the economic crisis, there may be trouble or hell that you are going through that is personal, depression or addictions or anything else in your life, marital problems, problems with your kids, bills that you cannot pay. What Jesus wants us to do is to learn how to manage the pressure that comes from the trouble so that it doesn't affect our hearts, so that it doesn't affect your hearts. You have to learn how to manage these troubling situations. The name of the game of life is learning to manage the pressure without succumbing to the stress. Yes, there is stress all the time. It's 
a very stressful time right now. But what we have to learn is how not to succumb to the stress. You know, I was driving in my um, Honda Accord uh, V6. I have a Honda Accord V6, a really nice car. Uh, and why do I have a Honda Accord? Because it's the only, it is the only car that is mentioned in the Bible. It's the only car that is mentioned in the Bible. That's why I got it. Yeah, you don't know? Over there in the Acts of the Apostles, it says, in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, it says, the apostles in one accord entered the temple. You see? That's why I have a Honda Accord. Everything I do is biblical, <laughs> even the car I drive. But I was driving my car the other day, and all of a sudden, I hear this beeping sound, like, you know, the seatbelt needs to be uh, buckled in. It was making the sound that the seat belt was not put on. And I said, well, I have my seat belt. So I look, and it's the passenger car. It's the passenger seat that was making the noise. And that's because I placed something heavy on the seat. And that was causing the car to make this alarm sound. The seat in your car doesn't respond to the presence of a body, but to the presence of weight. And you put a certain amount of weight there, and boom, there will be warning signals going off and off and sounding an alarm. Too much pressure! What is the car that we all drive in our life? Our body. And that which drives it is our soul. The principle of life. That which animates us. Our spirit. And when you put too much pressure there, there will be alarm sounds. And you will get sick. A healthy body means healthy mind. There is a correlation between our physical health and our mental health, psychosomatic. There is a link there. You want to be healthy in your body, you first have to get healthy in your mind, your soul, your spirit, that which drives you. I know that very well. I weighed at 1.325 pounds in my life because my soul was sick. I was carrying a lot of stuff. I was carrying a lot of things. And it was only when I gave them over to God that I was able to find healing. The turning point in the seminary for me was when I decided that I don't think I could go on like this anymore. And I went to the rector and I, of the seminary, the, the father who was in charge, and I told him, I said, I'm carrying too much stuff. I have all of these things in me. I was carrying my parents' divorce, the bullying that I sustained in school, coming here as, a, as an immigrant, leaving my my family behind in Poland, I was carrying all of these scars in me. And I said, I don't think I can go on like this. I thought, how could I go on to become a priest? And he looked at me and he said, Adam, he said, I'm not going to lie to you you have a lot of issues. You have a lot of stuff. Thank you for sharing them with me. Now give them over to me, he says. Give me the things that you have brought here. Get rid of the sack that you're carrying. Empty the sack, he said. 
Give it to me, and we will carry it together. And we carried it together all the way to ordination. That's what Jesus is asking us to do in our life. To give him all that is weighing us down so that we may have peace and become the healthy individuals that he wants us to be. And it was only then that I began to lose weight. Only then. When I started getting my interior life in order. Something is unsafe, the pressure says, the alarm says. Something is unsafe to keep driving with that much weight, that much pressure, that much stuff on the seat. Take the weight off. Take the pressure off. Remove the stuff that is setting the alarm off. Then, then you will become free, liberated. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in me. Have faith in my Father. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. I'm going before you to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be. Master, show us the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you have seen me, you've seen the Father. To have Jesus is to have it all, is to have peace. Take it off. What is it that you need to get rid of? Maybe it's the abusive relationship you are in. You have no right to submit your, you have no obligation to submit yourself to an abusive relationship, even if you're married to the person and they don't want to get help. Take the pressure off. Don't let them take you down the tubes with them. You have no obligation to submit yourself to an abusive relationship. Don't allow people to abuse you. Maybe it's the pressure of a work environment that you can't stand. Maybe this is the time to look for new employment, new opportunities. Maybe you're the pressure of being alone. This time you're, you've got a lot of time on your hands. Instead of scrolling through Facebook feeds of other people looking happy with their partner, get yourself on, online on a on a dating site and start chatting. What's the pressure that you're feeling? The depression? What are you doing to deal with it? Have you seen a doctor? Or your medical provider? Depression a lot of times is a chemical imbalance in your body. You need help. One little small pill to balance the chemicals. Medicine is a gift from God. You're drinking too much? There's AA. You're overeating? There's Overeaters Anonymous. There's help out there. Are you using this time to take the pressure off or the pressure from a past mistake? The, the pressure of your sins? What's the pressure that you're feeling? And today is Mother's Day. Maybe you weren't the best mom, or you're not the best child, or you weren't the best child. Give it over to God. Lift that pressure up. Take it off. You know, it hit me. It wasn't a body that was in the seat. It was just some stuff. When I was driving, I said, it's just stuff. Not a body here. It's just some stuff. The bell's going off today to take that stuff off, to lift it off so you can go where God is leading you.
It's just stuff. You're going to let stuff get in the way? Or somebody in the way of your peace? Or something? It wasn't nothing but stuff. And while it may cause pressure, I won't let it turn into stress. Because I'm going to lift it off. Remove it. I won't give stuff power over me. When you allow things to rob you of your peace, you are giving that power. When you're dwelling on what somebody's done to you or your past mistakes or somebody not paying attention to you or things, you are giving that person or that stuff power. Or your sins, you're giving power. You're empowering them. You take that power back and you get rid of anything and everything. You empty the sack. You know, the Bible says, though I walk in the... And I've been praying this psalm now during these days like I haven't before. Though I walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. Valley! Focus on that word. Valley. What is a valley? A valley is a depressed place situated between two elevated places. Have you noticed what a valley is? You say that all the time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me in the valley. Though I walk in the, in the, in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. A valley is in between two mountains. Two elevated places, which means I can't, get, I can't get to the next elevated place. I cannot get to the next mountain without first getting through the valley. In order to get to the mountaintop, I have to first get through the valley. Though I walk the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. My heart will not be troubled, for you are with me. Let me tell you something. Stop trying to have a valley-free life. Trying to hop from one mountain to the next. You aren't ready for the high places until you learn how to manage the low places. Because life is about highs and lows. Not just highs. It ain't all mountains. We have to set our mind on the will of God, especially when I am in the low places, when I am in the valley, when you feel like giving up, when you feel like walking out. When you're in the valley, you got to see the mountaintop. You got marital problems and you're working through them and right now it doesn't seem like the mountaintop will be reached. You focus on that mountaintop. You, the valley is temporary. You've been on the mountaintop before and you came down. But everything that comes down at some point or another comes up. You can never rise unless you fall. You can never get up unless you fall down. Stop trying to have a valley-free life. You are in the low place. You may feel like giving up on your job or on your marriage or on your family or on life altogether. In the valley, you got to see the mountaintop. Let me tell you, I, I learned not in the seminary how to be a priest. Oh, let me tell you right now. I did not know. Not in... Not in the classroom. I learned how to be a priest in the low places, in the valleys of my life, in my problems, in my issues. It's where you are tested. And what's the test? We pray that in the Our Father, lead us not into the test. The word temptation is the test. Lead us not into the test. What's the test? Because you know those scripture verses by your faith where you go on saying all the time, no weapon will be formed against me. It's one thing to say it, but it's another thing 
to be tested and to put it into practice. You go around saying, God will supply all my needs, but show it with your attitude. It wasn't until I got broke. It wasn't until you get broken that your faith is tested, that you can let it shine. Not my will, but your will be done. Notice Jesus doesn't say, I don't have a will. Jesus doesn't say my will is gone. But what he is saying is that I will live with it if you decide not to change it. Are you prepared to live with what God ain't going to change? For the time being, he can, but he's developing you in the valley. During this pandemic, we are in the valley. We are in the low, but we can see the mountaintop. Things are reopening. We're right now in phase two here in this area of California. They're saying that there might be a vaccine developed by the end of the year. There is a mountaintop that we can see, but in the meantime, we got to manage the valley. That's what it's about, managing the valley. And God is getting us through all of it. He is developing us. You wouldn't be the mother you are if it wasn't for the valleys. Are you prepared to live with God, with what God ain't going to change? Stop being jealous and envious, saying their wife got cancer and received chemo and lived and my wife died. Their marriage reconciled, but mine is still a mess. Their child got clean off of drugs, but mine is still getting high every day. Your friends can buy tailor-made suits, but you have to go to the thrift store. You have to be mature enough in your faith to say, God, I know you can change it, but if you don't change it, that's okay. It's okay because you are God and I am not. If I have to go through this valley, it's okay because not my will be done, but your will be done. I figured out in my own life that sometimes God refusing to change what he has the power to change. And you know, God is all powerful. He can change anything like this. But I figured out that God refusing to change what he has the power to change isn't a curse, but a compliment. That's why I thank God for the valleys. Because I see it as a compliment and not a curse. Every problem is a compliment to me. Every suffering, every obstacle, every rock that I have to stumble over is a compliment. And how is it a compliment? Because God has so much confidence in me that he will allow me to go through this valley, long and lonesome valley, because God knows I can handle it. In other words, there is more Job in me then you really know. If God keeps you in the valley, he knows you will still bless God if he's given you the valley. What do you think is curse is really a compliment? Maybe the devil brought your name like he brought Job's name to God. When the devil was roaming around idle, and God notices him and says, devil, what are you doing? You've got nothing to do? And the devil says, well, I've got nobody to tempt. And God says, well, have you seen my servant Job? Oh, but I can't touch him because you have him protected. And God says, I will remove the protection from Job and you can tempt him. But I will not let anything bad happen to him. No harm will touch him. That's chapter 1 of the book of Job. Maybe the devil brought your name before God. And God is allowing this test. He has such confidence in me 
And if he has confidence in me, why won't I have confidence in myself? If the God of the universe thinks I can do it, why do I think I can't? Of course you can. You limit yourself with your own limited thinking. Stop it. If you tell yourself you can't, you won't. Of course you will, because God is with you. God says to Job, to the devil about Job, you can touch him, but you can't kill him. God says to the devil, the devil said that Job would curse God to God's face. It's not about what Job would do, but about what Job would say. With all the hell that was put on Job, he still opened his mouth and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. This is about what you will say, which will lead to what you will do. The positivity in your speech. Is there only good things coming out of your mouth? Praise and glory to God. Positivity, words lifting up your family members, your spouse, your children, all those in your life? Are you lifting people up? Is there only positivity coming from your mouth? Or has the devil affected your mouth, your speech? You open your mouth and you praise God in the midst of all you are going through. You bless God. You praise God. There are some conflicts you will have to work through without the benefit of being delivered from them. God is a deliverer. He can deliver us from anything and everything. But there are some things in our life, some valleys that we are in, that we will be in for a long time. There's all this talk about God being the deliverer, and He is a deliverer. He delivers us. He saves us. But he delivers us from what? From ourselves. I told you we are our own worst enemies. He delivers us from the snares of death that want to kill us. The soul that want to kill your soul. He delivers you from the hands of your enemies. Yes, he does. when they want to touch and affect your spirit to deliver you. You want him to deliver you from your problems. You can be in the midst of problems and not be really going through them if you've got peace inside. You want to be delivered from suffering. What kind of suffering are you looking to be delivered from? External or internal? That's the real suffering. That's why we have so much suicide and so much depression. So many people are so unhappy today. To deliver you from evil? Or are you after God keeping you? I say to the Lord, Lord, keep me in the palm of your hands. God delivers us by guarding us, by being our guardian, by keeping us. Psalm 121 says that so very well. The Lord will keep me from all harm. He will watch over my whole life. The Lord will watch my coming and my going both now and forevermore. Even when I'm in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord keeps watch over me. Like a watchman, he stands there to make sure nothing bad happens to me. God is my keeper. That's how he delivers me. By carrying me in his arms. By keeping me secure as I rest securely in his peace. I lift up my eyes to the valley.
I lift up my eyes to the mountains. As I'm in the valley, I lift up my eyes to the mountains, the Bible says. From where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord my God, who made heaven and earth. God is keeping us in some tough situations, like this coronavirus. I've been through tough situations before, and I came out of them. And I will come out of this one as well. God has been keeping me. He has been keeping you in your sickness, in this disease, in this cancer, in this marriage, with these kids, with these jealous and envious co-workers. God is keeping you. He is the guardian. He is our guardian. He guards us, the Bible says. God is keeping me in what could have killed me, in what should have killed me. God is keeping me, and he's watching over me, and he's watching over you. Let us now stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present to the Lord our needs. Let us pray for our holy church that the Lord may continue to guide her in the midst of trying times as she continues to guide us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for all of our leaders that they may listen to the Lord, listen to the voice of God as they make decisions on our behalf, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for each of us who need prayer, who need the gift of prayer in our lives, that the Lord may touch us with his healing today, his presence allowing us to feel that he is guarding us, he's watching over us. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all those who are sick, those who need the healing touch of the Lord in their lives. We pray to the Lord and those who have died. May they sleep in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. 
And let's pray today for all of our mothers, both living and deceased, that through the mercy of God, they may be touched by his love, either here or in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given human hands of made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever, Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that mine and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, we pray, these gifts by sending your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you forever through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us stand as we pray as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from all evil. Always grant us peace in our days, that helped by your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and always grant us the gift of peace and unity, the gift of your kingdom, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb together. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. O sacrament most holy. So thank you so very much for joining me today for Mass. I'm so happy you're with me. I'm a bit tired. I don't know if you've kind of noticed. We had a lot, 
big retreat uh, day today, uh, virtually, so I've been, uh, I was participating all afternoon, and it didn't finish till after uh, 3 o'clock. So, uh, I may not have the same energy as I uh, always do, but I do pray for each and every one of you, and I prayed for you today during the retreat, and I wish all the mothers happy, happy Mother's Day. It's so wonderful, the love of a mother, that even God wanted to taste it. So it's so beautiful. Uh, and, of course, we have our Blessed Mother who always watches over us. And so let's pray to her for her protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And let me give you this special blessing today on this Mother's Day for you and for your families. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have Im you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Did you like the transmission of uh, this Mass? Comment if it was good. Um, we have, of course, um, uh, we s spend uh, a lot of money in order to purchase the, uh, this equipment. We'll be working on getting a wireless mic so I don't have to fidget with this one. Um, so I hope the transmission was good. It's so good to be with all of you. Uh, and on our Facebook page for the, for the church, uh, Our Lady Queen of Peace uh, Facebook page, there is a button uh, if you'd like to support uh, the parish. Now, uh, we haven't uh, um, been having masses, and so especially if, if, if uh, in, in gratitude for this... Uh, uh, in, new equipment. It's thousands and thousands of dollars. We had to drill through the walls and everything like that. So if you can and are able, there's going to be a button there uh, placed there for you. Uh, and I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your uh, generosity to Queen of Peace uh, Parish uh, here in Clear Lake. And uh, this week, I will let you know there on, on Facebook when I will have the Bible study. I'm going to do one in English also. I'll do one in Spanish and one in English. And I'll let you know uh, when that will be towards the end of the week. Uh, and um, maybe I'll do it a little bit earlier uh, instead of at 7 o'clock. But I'll see uh, what time I'll do it. And I'll, I'll, I'll announce it. So stay uh, stay close to the Facebook page. And all the best to all of you today and always. Life is good. The Lord is with us. He's keeping us. He is keeping us. He's guarding us. It will all be great. Let's receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful afternoon.